Hi, this is Mr. Corb. Welcome to Art with Corb. Are we on? Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is this. You're going to grid your portrait first, and then we're going to grid our canvases. At this point in time, for those who are watching in the future, I've only got a handful of 8 by 10 canvases left. So the 8 by 10 canvas, if you're lucky enough to get that, is very simple to grid. We'll take a T-square, and we're going to mark it off in one-inch increments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight falls off of the canvas. The nice thing about using a T-square is all we have to do is lock the T-square in place and then very lightly draw the lines using the T of the square against the straight edge of the canvas. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Then what we'll do is we'll mark off the length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then again, you're going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Do that. When you're using a T-square or anything on a canvas, I recommend drawing very straight up and down and very lightly because it pushes down and sometimes the pencil will go under the ruler and then it looks like it's curved. So that's how we're going to do that. Questions on the 8 by 10 inch canvas. The nice thing is your portrait is 8 by 10 ish. It's actually 8 by 10 and a half. So if you're doing an 8 by 10 on the portrait, you're also going to, and I would just use a ruler out of the box or a ruler out of wherever you've got your ruler, whoever's watching this. I would just mark it off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in this case, I would slide it down and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you take your ruler and line it up, line up the bottom dot and the top dot. Why do we need two dots? So you can make two lines straight. Make a straight line. Make a straight line. Make a straight line. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're going to do it <coughs> horizontally also. And it's going to be 10. Questions about this? All right. Yes? Um, if you wish to do the, t the 8 by 10, um, 10 one, can you cut off a half an inch? Of Don't even worry about it. Don't even, it's just there on your picture plane. Don't, you're, don't think too much about it. Okay. Those of, who are, those of us who are doing the rest of them, and that's going to be like all but four of you. I don't know how you're going to do it. Rock, paper, scissors. I don't know. Um, sumo wrestling. I'm not sure how you're going to decide who gets what, but there's, there's four of these left. The rest of us, we're going to do a six by eight. Can I have a ruler? A six by eight piece out of this. Oh, my gosh. Onto this. Thank you. So it's going to be a 6 by 8 inch grid. Uh, yes, on the paper, on the portrait, it's going to be a 6 by 8 inch grid. On the canvas, we're going to use a 1 and a half inch grid. It's 6 squares across and 8 squares up and down on the canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine where I want my 8 inches. So I really, if in this case, I want the top of my head in the composition. So I'm going to put a mark on my drawing, my photograph, where I want my zero to be. It's not at the top of the uh, piece of paper. It's not at the top of the photograph. It's inside. I want the top of my composition to be here. Then I'm going to measure down 8 inches. So I'll put a mark at 1 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? Questions on this? Why only eight? Because this is eight squares up and down. Okay? Now, I have to draw another set of lines. So I have to look on my ruler where my zero mark is. So I'm going to remark this one. And again, I'm going to do eight every inch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Are you going all the way across? Yep. In this case, I'm going to now, well, no, it's not, but for my sake, I'm going to draw my lines <coughs> like this. And then I'm going to go six inches across for my width of the piece. So I'm going to decide where I want zero to be. I think I want uh, less space on here, on the, the side of it, more negative <coughs> space on the left side. So I'm going to put a mark here to mark zero. And it is, it doesn't matter how far from the edge it is, as long as I can get six inches across. And I can. So, one, two, three, four, five, and zero. This is two inches in from the edge of the paper. So I always have to make sure my zero is the same. And then I'm going to mark it off. One, two, three, four, five, zero. And now I'm going to connect these up. So here's my six inch grid. Uh oh, I lost it. There it is. Hard to see marker on black hair. It's too bad I wasn't drawing on my gray hair. That would make much more easier to see. Thank you for laughing at my hair deficit. After we're done drawing this out and you're drawing out the grid on your canvas, one, two, three, four, five, four, one more, <coughs> I'm now going to label my grid. Across the top row, I'm going to label the top square one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And up and down, my rows are going a. to be A, yep, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So I have a one inch to one and a half inch ratio. If I were to draw it out on a board, it would be one to 1 1.5, okay? Questions? Good. The next thing you're going to do after you've got your grid drawn is you're going to take a Sharpie marker over the photograph and you're going to trace out the dominant features, the dominant shapes. Eyes are a good place to start. You're going to trace out the dominant shapes and you're also going to work very hard to create all closed shapes. So some of my shapes like the bags under my eyes, don't actually close off. <laughs> but I'm going to create shapes. I'm going to connect things, like the shadow underneath my eye or in my eye socket that blends up into my eyebrow. Curves up like this. I've got a shadow here. I'm going to close this off. I'm going to close this off. Um, my nose. Noses are very difficult. I have to figure out how to close off the wing of my nose there. So I'm going to draw this up like this. There's my eyebrow. Now my nose has a couple of breaks in it from when I rolled off of a bed playing with my daughter when she was a little child. It's chasing her. Captain Hook, Peter Pan. Broke my nose on the bed frame. But I'm going through here, and I'm finding all of the shadows, all of the big outlines of all the features. So is this what we need done by the end of break? Well, you've got one more thing that you're going to need to do. And so I'm going to continue this, and I'll show a picture of it when I'm all done tracing it. But what we're going to have to have done by break is I want you to have not only this all traced out, but it's going to be transferred over to here. So let's pretend I'm done with this. I'm going to finish it this hour. 
but we'll pretend I'm all done with this. And you can see if you've got closed shapes by looking at the back of it. So far I've got all closed shapes on the back of my portrait. I'll show you guys. See the closed shapes? Okay. What's that? Oh, I'll do that. I'm going to do that later. I'm gonna, I want to show you guys what we're doing then. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what's in my squares. In 1A, there's nothing. There's nothing in 1A. There's nothing in 1B. There's nothing in 1C. I have to go all the way down to 1H until I start to see shapes. And actually, one it's J. one single line. There's no J. G. G. Oh, and G. But there's no, there's no shapes in many of my squares. And this is good because this, is, this process is going to make you transferring this very difficult portrait into a very successful artwork a lot easier. If you can look at each square and only see the shapes and don't get your brain wrapped around the fact that it's an eyeball or an ear or a neck or any other features, this is going to be a lot easier. So if I look at the back of my piece of paper, I can see, oh look at that, for my tie, there's only one line, two lines in this square. In this square, there's only one, two, three, four lines. In this square, there's one, two lines. I'm going to be able to do this whole thing up very, very simply. That's where we're going to head from here. So when you're done with this, then you're going to transfer everything over. So in square 3B, 1, 2, 3B, I'm going to draw, and I want to look at where my lines intersect. It goes down and comes back up. That's all I've got in that entire square. Then in the next square over, it curves up, and then it curves back down. That's all that happens in 4B. In 5B, it does this. It curves up to my hairline and then ends before that box ends. So that's how we're going to do this. Questions? All right. If you've got any questions, come see me. Thank you for filming. Go get to work.